I've been making videos for four years now, but unfortunately in that time, there are some props that have never gotten their own dedicated tutorial. So in this video, I wanna show you guys some of the props and projects that never quite got the right screen time. Let's get started. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank and today's video is pretty straightforward. There have been a couple helmets and projects I've made throughout the years that just didn't quite warrant a video or I kind of had to power through them or even lost footage on them and could never really finish making a video about it. So that's what I want to do in today's video. I want to show those projects off to you guys, talk about them, talk about where to get the files, some of the small intricacies that went into it and hopefully by the end of the video you'll have a better understanding of how I made some of these things even without a full dedicated tutorial. So the props we're going to be covering in this video are going to to include my Captain America World War II heater shield, my Sam Alexander and Guardians of the Galaxy video game Nova helmets, whew, my giant Zengetsu sword from Bleach, one of my personal favorite projects, a battle damaged Mark 50 Iron Man helmet from Avengers Endgame. A more recent prop build that was actually a sponsorship from EA Games for Apex Legends, uh, this is the Whistler pistol and this thing came out really cool. The Z sword from Dragon Ball Z. And finally, my first ever 3D printed prop that was bigger than, you know, like an arc reactor, um, the Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts. I made this four years ago and I still have it. Now, I understand not every single one of you is gonna be interested in every single one of these props, so please utilize the chapters in the scroll bar to just scroll to the one you're interested in. But without further ado, let's get started. The heater shield from the first Captain America movie. I love how this prop came out, especially when I wanted to start doing my, you know, big three before and after. Now, this isn't a real complex print. The file is actually free on Thingiverse, and I printed it in two solid pieces on my Creality CR10 Max. You can actually still see a kind of janky weld line sitting right about here, and then I just did some really cheap leather work on the back. I cut apart a belt, and it's been hanging on the wall for so long, some of the leather has started to come off, but I think it came out pretty good. I tried to paint the inside bronze, and I did my best. However, where this thing really shines is the paint job. Now, masking everything off and using Google Images as a reference was key to this, making sure I measured all of the stripes, got the right distancing, I paid attention to where they were at the bottom, the size of the stars, and all of that. Now originally when I painted it, I had done gloss paint and it just looked weird, so I hit everything with a nice dirty matte coat and that really sell that just sells it beautifully and I love how this paint job came out. But what really set this apart was the battle damage. That was something that took a little bit of trial and error. I actually used dirt and grime from my garage. I took the bottom of it and scraped it across the ground. I took a soldering iron and pushed in little fake bullet holes and just got it dirty. I was using grime on my hands by rubbing the floor. And being able to replicate battle damage like that, you just need to think how would this thing have interacted with the environment as Steve was using it for, you know, whatever he was using it for, or at least until Red Skull put his fist through it and made a cool dent. Okay, I think, I think I should sit down for this next one. Now we're gonna be talking about the um, Guardians of the Galaxy Nova helmet and the Sam Alexander Nova helmet. Now, truth be told, I still might go back and make a tutorial on one of these or maybe some kind of tutorial about both of them, but it might be a little while. Um, I guess first up, let's talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy one because it's a little less complicated than the Sam Alexander. Now this file is from um, Vec3D on Instagram and it is a beautiful helmet file. It's honestly a fairly simple print until it comes to the little star visor in the front. The entire gold piece is all one solid part and I do believe it would just barely fit on an Ender 3 if you scaled it down a little, but luckily there's a lot more helmet class um, printers now, uh, like the Neptune 3 Pluses and even the um, Bamboo uh, X1s and P1Ps, so fitting helmets like this really isn't a problem anymore. And then this entire gunmetal visor in the front just kind of locks in there. You can see it's actually just taped in there. I never really did anything beyond that. And then there's the little star visor. Now, at my request after Vec had modeled this, he even put two little slots down here for eyes, and I actually have some window tint in there, the same way I do my Mandalorian helmets this way when I put the helmet on I can still see through those slots pretty much perfectly. Now, if you've been following the channel for a little while, you'll recognize this gold as just a standard Rust-Oleum gold and then this is a um, oil rubbed bronze gunmetal by Rust-Oleum and all of this stuff will be linked down below too. And then I took some modeling paint and a paintbrush and that's where I did all of these gold detail lines. That was actually a really fun part of the project was adding all the little details. I painted the star on the back red and just uh, how to mask off all of this to do the gunmetal. So this is a nice intricate build. I do wish I had recorded more of this, but yeah, you can't win them all. 
As for this visor, this is a clear red resin printed visor. I actually had to go through a couple renditions of this because I was still new to resin printing at the time. Um, the goal was to make the star light up and maybe one day I'll go back and revisit that. But for now, there is just some chrome window tint foil sitting behind it to give it a little bit of a reflection depending on how the light hits it. It's a really simple trick. You can actually see the, um, all the tape, the tape and paper just kind of sitting back there, but it works great. And that's how I made that helmet. And it's a, it's a really cool helmet. Next up is the Sam Alexander Nova helmet. Now people ask me about this one all of the time because it is a very cool looking armored style helmet. It's not just his standard black helmet. The modeler went and just did some real amazing extra work on this. Unfortunately though, this file is no longer available. So I can't even recommend you guys even build it. Um, it was on CG Trader. I believe the modeler was Russian and he shut his shop down about a year or two ago. Um, and I do have this file, but it is not mine to sell. Maybe another independent modeler will make some type of copy of this, uh, but I also don't want to encourage people ripping this off. So this might just be something that's just lost in obscurity and only a couple people have. However, it is an amazing file because all of the little parts on it are actually modular and I added magnets to everything so I could sit here and take the entire thing apart and put it on and wear it. Um, this was printed on my Creality CR-10S Pro V2 at a very high quality and it is one of my favorite helmets and maybe I will remake it, but it's kind of hard to make a tutorial for you guys when you guys can't even print the helmet out. So yeah, if somebody does want to model it, by all means, it is a super cool helmet. It's a little tight, but let's put it on. Now, fun fact, um, a lot of people have asked about the eyes on this helmet. Um, they're just white PLA rafts. I never actually added LED eyes to this because it's just a shelf topper. The LED eyes I buy aren't big enough for this. So when I put this on, um, I can't actually see, but there are two very tiny slits up here. So if I tilt my head forward, I can see the camera just fine until I take the magnetized star right here and put that on and now I'm completely blind. So um, it looks really cool, and one day I'll get the eyes to light up, but for now, um, I can't see anything out of this. Oh well. And if I wanna go a little bit extra, I can take the mouthpiece and just pop that in, and I think this looks so cool by itself, but let's just add the star for funsies. And it is easily one of the coolest helmets in my collection. Uh, it is hard to breathe, and again, I can't see anything out of it unless I do that, and then I can see pretty good but it is such a cool helmet and it kind of looks like a bird. I don't know if that's intentional, but the same, <laughs> but the exact same premise. Um, this is just standard uh, Rust-Oleum or Krylon gloss black, the same way I painted my Hellbat helmet. And then the same way I did my Nova, I just took some gold paint, did all of the detail and accent lines. And then I just took those uh, purse magnets that I love to use and I melted them into various locations around the helmet. This way the entire thing is modular and I can pop it on and off. And uh, it's kind of a, tight helmet, but man, is it cool. Oh, and then the trick to getting the star to actually fit onto the front, um, there are two magnets inside of the helmet and I melted the walls down so much that these magnets are only two layers away from the outside of the helmet. And then I used some very thin rafts to hide magnets on the inside of the star. This way, it's just enough magnetism to hold it on. It's not the strongest thing in the world, but again, for display purposes, it works out just fine. So I do love me some big swords. Now, full disclosure, I have no idea where I got this file, but I have gone and since found a really nice file on CG Trader. Thingiverse even has some free files because this is a very simple design. Um, and if I can remember who I actually got this file from, I'll link that down below. But it's a pretty standard sword and honestly one of the easier ones to make that's just, you know, big for no reason because it's two colors and you can wrap the handle. Now, just like all my other swords, I printed it in multiple pieces and then I fused them together using PLA welding. I masked everything off. I painted this black. I used a standard Rust-Oleum chrome for the blade and I cut up a pillowcase for the sword. Now, because I um, I was in a little bit of a rush, I probably should have printed it at a higher infill. However, the handle has gone and since broken right here, but honestly, you can't really tell and who cares anyway, because it looks so cool. Um, but yeah, Zengetsu, this is like the Mjolnir of easy projects. I always recommend Mjolnir to people who are starting off in prop making because it is such an easy build. But if you're looking to make a really large cosplay sword, Zengetsu is probably a really good choice and it's really recognizable. Even people who don't really watch anime recognize this thing and um, 
hey, you know, why not? It's a really, really cool sword. Okay, we are back at the desk for this one because we're on a helmet. This is my Battle Damaged Mark 50 Iron Man helmet from Avengers Endgame. You guys will remember it from the thing uh, Tony likes to record his message into while he thinks he's dying in space. Very sad moment, and um, luckily he made it out of that, but, you know, spoiler alert, he didn't make it through all of Endgame. Now, I don't know why I didn't record this build. This thing came out really awesome, and I am proud of the paint job, the weathering, the damage, the LED eyes, and this cool little magnet system. But this is a fully resin printed helmet, and I don't have a lot of these. Now, because I was learning to resin print at the time, I had some scaling issues and I messed some stuff up, so I can't wear this helmet. I had to fuse the back of it together. But as far as paint jobs go, this is the same paint job I use on my Mark 85. This is just the standard um, metal cast red over gold. I did the standard gold faceplate, and then I used just some silver paint to do this little inner detail. And I have a whole and I have a whole tutorial on battle damaging and weathering props, and that's the same method I used on this entire helmet. I just added some magnets to the bottom of this little faceplate inside the chin and inside the back of the faceplate. This way I can pop this in and out, and I just think that's a really cool gimmick to be able to remove that. But there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that the battle damage and weathering on this helmet is what makes it look so cool. And it is just, at this point, it is such an iconic prop. If you are a Marvel fan, you recognize this thing immediately and it just looks amazing on the shelf. So this is absolutely a prop I would recommend testing your hand at if you're trying to build it. However, I don't recommend FDM 3D printing it because of just the crazy details and intricacies in this faceplate. You can FDM print this or plastic print this, but you're gonna be breaking out supports for a while. This might not be too bad, but if you can get something like a, you know, an Elegoo Mars um, Pro or 2 Pro, this faceplate will fit on it just fine. Um, but yeah, Godspeed if you're gonna try to FDM print this. I waited a long time to make this helmet because I just wanted a resin printer and it was worth the wait. Oh hey, we're still sitting at the desk for the next part. This is the Whistler pistol from Apex Legends. And this was a really awesome sponsored build from EA Games. Um, it was done in a massive rush because I love to procrastinate. They already they already approved the video and saw it and everything, and they liked it. So I can be honest about how um, how how quickly I threw this thing together. This entire thing was printed on a bamboo P1P overnight. Um, if you look really carefully and you know what you're looking at, you can definitely still see some layer lines here and there. I didn't sand this thing at all. I literally took it off the printer, put it together, threw a bunch of screws in it to make it work and you know be one piece, haha, <laughs> one piece, and uh, it works and it is beautiful. Oh, wait, wait, there, nope, wait, yep, there we go. It was modeled in a rush by my buddy Archie Seals over at Banished Builds. Um, I don't think he has this file on his Etsy, but I bet if you message him, you could get it from him. Um, it's a really cool little prop, and I think he's gone and made some tweaks after I printed it because he went and printed his own too. If I wasn't painting this in like a gritty gun style, I probably would have sanded it or upped the quality, but again, I was in a rush. And then I actually took a bunch of stickers from my Gundam models and actually put them all around it just to give it a little bit more detail. I hand painted in the yellow because again, I was in a rush and I couldn't wait for decals to arrive. And you know, I think it came out pretty cool. But yeah, super quick, fun build. And it was really cool to do a sponsored project with EA. Um, they actually just emailed me asking me to send this to them. And, um, I kind of don't want to, I like it, but I think I should. Yeah, we'll see. Um, that's kind of cool though. Yeah, moving on. The legendary Z sword from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, one of the most useless plot devices in all of anime. And if you go back and watch the Boo Saga, you'll know exactly what I mean. It surmounted to nothing. Trunks' sword did more because he actually defeated somebody with it. Anyway, immediately after filming the intro of this video with this sword, I stepped on it and broke it. Um, I will fix that later with some glue. I've had this prop for a while and it has been through some damage. It has hung on my wall. It has fallen off of my wall. The blade has been repainted 19 times because it keeps getting scratched. I took it to Anime New York. It broke again. I've rewrapped the handle. This thing has just been through it all, but it is one of the original props I made and a lot of you will recognize it from very early videos and live streams. And I just never made a video on it, um, but it's a really cool, simple prop. Same way I make all my swords. I printed them in a couple pieces before I had the belt printer, of course. And then I screwed everything together. I can actually unscrew this handle here. You can see that this spins just fine because there is a metal rod going through the entire handle and about halfway up the blade just so for stability so it doesn't want to break. Um, very easy build. This was a different gold because I didn't want the gold to continue to look like all the other props in the room, but it's some modeling paint I had at the time. I wrapped the handle in some grip tape. I hand painted this little gem on the back and this 
this is the same rust-oleum gold i uh, rust-oleum chrome i used on mjolnir and stormbreaker and a couple of the other props so a very simple build but i definitely like this sword more than trunks is even though it didn't do anything all right last but not least the first 3d printed prop i made like i said that was bigger than an arc reactor actually i have my first arc reactor back there and it looks bad you're not going to see it but I am a massive Kingdom Hearts fan. I grew up with the game, I love it. I still replay them. It's one of the few games I will actually sit down and replay. And before I even had my 3D printer, which is conveniently sitting right back there, my original Creality CR-10S that started this entire channel, um, it's been since been upgraded a little bit, when I put that printer on order, I was immediately on Thingiverse looking for files. And this is one of the first files I downloaded. I've had the file for this longer than I had my printer. And what's really cool about this Keyblade, though I scaled it up a little bit because I wanted it, I just wanted it, I wanted it to be big. It's a Keyblade and I'm not the size of Sora. I think he's like two feet tall. Um, and I just, I love how awesome this thing feels. What's cool about it is this middle piece right here is actually a PVC pipe. It's a standard PVC pipe that the modeler had kind of just envisioned into putting into the file. This way you don't have to print a ridiculously long piece and you can put it together. Now, this thing looks terrible. I think I used some RTV for the front here because the print failed. I didn't weld or sand almost anything. This is blue electrical tape. It's broken a few times. I keep hitting my light. It's just not a good prop. Um, but it, it has this massive sentimental value to me. And it was a fun first project and it fits on an Ender 3. Actually, this thing was designed to fit on printers smaller than an Ender 3, some of the original 3D printers. I'm pretty sure the Thingiverse file for this was uploaded in 2015. I don't know if the Ender 3 was even out then, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do plan on making a video remaking this prop with what I've learned today, and I'm very excited about that. That is a video that will be coming out eventually. I'm good, I still have this file, and it's still on Thingiverse. I want to remake this as good as possible and just see how far I've come in four years. It will be, I'm gonna try to make it the best prop I've ever made, um, but we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. And I also have not only made the original Kingdom Key, um, I think I said the Keyblade in the beginning of the video. It's the Kingdom Key. I actually have Oathkeeper right here if you're a Kingdom Hearts fan. Now, I haven't finished painting this because I really need to learn to airbrush. Um, this isn't something you spray paint, and if you know what Oathkeeper's paint scheme looks like, here it is on screen. It's pretty crazy, and I want to do this thing justice. Um, it's broken a few times because I printed this in England, but yeah, one day we'll finish Oathkeeper, and of course I'm going to print Oblivion to go along with it. I'm not some type of crazy person. Oathkeeper deserves a little buddy to hang on the wall with. But with that, that's pretty much gonna round out this video, guys. There are a couple little onesies and twosies I didn't talk about, but I just don't think they're special enough to even mention. And I have a bunch of unfinished projects that I showed in a previous video that, again, will eventually get finished, but it's just kind of more of the same. Big swords, big props, and helmets you've kind of already seen. But uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave a comment down below. Um, I do my best to answer as many as possible, but I do read all of them. Let me know what else you might want to see on the channel or some upcoming projects that you might be interested in. I have a lot of stuff planned, especially going over this 1 million uh, subscriber mark. This is insane. I am, I'm low-key freaking out about it because that's just, thank you. Like, thank you everybody who supported me up until this point and all the views and shares and likes and comments, like, what, whatever. Like, thank you. It, it, a million, a million, a million subscribers. I'm going to get the, 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 the gold play. Oh, I'm so excited. And I have a very, very special video planned for after I break 1 million. Um, it, it involves taking a trip somewhere and highlighting somebody very special who's doing some really cool stuff. Just, I, I am so excited. The video is not about me. Um, and this, you'll see. Just so please, please stay tuned for that. Um, when that video comes out, I, yeah, you'll, you'll know, you'll know. But um, it might be at this rate. It'll be like in four or five videos. Yeah, like Saturdays away. So uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm done rambling. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, you know, notifications, all that fun stuff. But uh, thank you. Thank you so much for watching and you guys have a good day.